Hey everybody, my name's Mike and I'm the pastor of Parkview Baptist Church. Uh, and we are so excited that you have chosen to uh, tune in for our very first episode of our virtual Vacation Bible School. Here are three things that I want you to know uh, for today and for these five days together uh, as we uh, get on this journey. Number one, I hope that you discover today and this week just how much Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. The second thing I want you to, to know today is just how much this church, Parkview Baptist Church, loves you dearly as well. And here's the third thing that I hope you know today, and that is this. I know that we cannot be together today or during this week of Vacation Bible School, but when you and your family decide that it's the right time for you to come back to church, we cannot wait to see you and have you in our building together uh, as a result of, uh, of you coming back to church with us here uh, at Parkview. So hey, it's time. It's time to get on all aboard uh, on the train for episode one. We are going to sing. We are going to dance together. We are gonna have so much fun as we talk about the power of Jesus uh, and how he helps us today do hard things. So come aboard. in you, Jesus. You're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. We're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. We're trusting in you. We're off on this journey, there's no looking back With Jesus to lead us, we're on the right track Oh, 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 oh. Wide open spaces for wide open eyes We're looking ahead for the next big surprise Oh, 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 oh. We trust, we trust we trust in you, Jesus, you're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. We're trusting in you. We're off on this journey. There's no looking back. With Jesus to lead us, we're on the right track. Oh, oh, oh. Wide open spaces for wide open eyes. We're looking ahead for the next big surprise. Oh, oh, oh. We trust. We trust, we trust in you, Jesus. You're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. We're trusting in you. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. 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 Always been. You alone have no beginning and no middle and no end. You're always with me. You are everywhere. In New Jersey or in Egypt, even outer space, you're there. Everything you are and do is 
unbelievable but true You're the God of wow, amazing How could this be? You're the God of war You're more than I could ever, ever dream The more I learn about you Exclamation points abound to the God of wow You're never needy, how could you be? You made everything on earth and in the sky and in the sea You're never lonely, the Trinity Father, Son and Holy Spirit, yet you're reaching out to me Inviting me to come to you, inconceivable but true You're the God of Amazing, how could this be? You're the God of war You're more than I could ever, ever dream The more I learn about you Exclamation points abound to the God of wow I can't find the words that could be big enough Loud enough there could be no song that I could sing enough, shout enough When I want to praise your name but don't know how I just say wow, amazing, how could this be? And I say whoa, you're more than I could ever, ever dream You're the God of wow, amazing, how could this be? You're the God of whoa you're more than I could ever, ever dream The more I learn about you Exclamation points abound to the God of Wow! Designer of the dinosaurs Mapper of the ocean floor Of all is your great love. You're the God of Wow. I've heard some commotion around the rail yard, rail yard about a rock play last night. It could be really bad. Maybe we can find someone who can tell us what happened. Hey, sir, do you work here? Work here? I do more than work here. I run the train. My name's Cam Track. Cam Track. And I am the engineer for this railroad. Hi, I'm Molly. Well, an engineer with a name like Cam Track must really love trains. Yeah. You know trains like I know trains. <laughs> they become a part of you. Well, that was really deep. But maybe you could help us. My friends and I heard something about a rock slide. Yep, yep, you got it right. Right off that mountain there, the rocks came down and landed right on top of the track, right there. Wow, that could be really bad. Yep, we had a plan. We were going to come on down to the town today, but the rock side got to stop. But don't you worry, I'm here to help you. Do you really think you could um, move all those boulders by yourself? I, I don't think it. I know I can. Hey there, friends. Glad you're all on board for a rambunctious week of faith and fun at Rocky Railway. I'm Ramsey, a bighorn sheep. Um, can you guess why? <laughs> okay, that was too easy. Check out these cool, curvy horns God gave me. Ram's horns can weigh up to 30 pounds. That's as much as some of our littlest preschool buddies. Wow! My horns have to be tough because we male sheep use them to keep other rams out of our territory. P. 
people who study rams say we can run into each other at 20 to 40 miles per hour. Bam! You can hear that sound for miles! Me and my herd hang out all over the majestic, massive Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains rock! If you head up to find me, strap on your hiking boots. Sometimes my herd grazes in an alpine meadow. Cause that's where the good stuff is! Mm, wow, good! But the meadow makes us an easy target for predators. So we also like to climb way up those crazy cliffs. We sheep like it steep. Me and my family can hang out on a little teeny tiny ledge that's only a few inches wide. Animals like bears or coyotes can't bother us here. Whew! And check out the view! God made us just right for staying safe in those hard, rocky places. My hooves are split and have a rough skin on the bottom that grips tight to the rugged rocks. Plus, I've got excellent eyesight. No glasses for me. It may sound like climbing these cliffs and balancing on jagged ledges is hard to do, but God has given me everything I need to live here. Find food and my family safe. I've heard that you sometimes have to do hard things too. When there's a bully at school, Maybe you feel like you're in a rough, rocky place. You may not be balanced on a cliff ledge like me, but maybe you have to balance homework, chores, sports, music, and friendships. That sounds hard. Hmm, maybe coming here today and making new friends even feels like a hard thing for you. But did you know you don't face those hard things alone? No way. Jesus is right beside you. Yep, even right now. He gives you his power to climb through those mountains of worry and get through any rough stuff you gotta do. The Bible powers you up with this truth. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. That means you don't have to have your own power to do hard things. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. y'all i'm so glad that you came to see me at my house today in your travel box you'll find a little booklet called tracking with jesus you're going to find the stories that we'll learn this week in this little booklet and you can go back and reread them before you go to bed at night maybe well when people come to see me i always try to make them feel very comfortable and one of those ways that we can do that is to learn more about each other so I want you to think, what's something that you can do that is really, really easy for you? Maybe you can dribble a basketball down the court and shoot a three-pointer with no trouble. Or maybe you can do a backflip on the trampoline like nobody's business. You know what? I can't do those things for sure. But you know what's easy for me? I can go in the kitchen and I can whip up a batch of chocolate chip cookies in no time or maybe a batch of brownies. Doesn't that sound good? How about you take just a minute with those that you're watching with and talk about those things that you do so well. Wow, y'all are good at a lot of stuff. That's amazing. Now tell me something that's really, really hard for you to do. That might take a little more time. You know, we all have things that are hard for us to do jobs that seem too big or stuff that just seems so complicated that we just don't even want to try to start it. When you run into something like that, remember this. This is our Bible point. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. Can we try that one more time? 
Jesus's power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. I remember a time when I had something hard to do. It was a long time ago, and when I was Ananias. What are you doing? What's it look like? I'm hiding. Hiding from whom? From everyone. Well, that's not going to work. Stand up and tell me what's going on. By the way, everyone, this is my friend Ananias. Ananias, these are my new friends. Hi, people. I don't know in my friend's house. So why exactly are you hiding? It's Saul. He's here in Damascus to put everyone who loves Jesus in prison, and I love Jesus. Oh, well, I guess you haven't heard. He's throwing lots of Jesus's friends in prison, and he's here in Damascus right But now. But I know. I guess you really just haven't heard about how Jesus came to him and appeared to Saul, and there was a bright light shone around Saul, and he heard Jesus's voice. And then he fell on the ground, and how he was blind, and how his buddies led him to Damascus. Yeah, I heard about all that. So then, why are you hiding, and why are you wearing that silly mustache? It's a disguise. It's not working. Give it to me. Hey, my cover's been blown now. Thank you. Well, trust me, it's just not working. Well. God came to me in a vision this morning and said I was to go to Straight Street, and when I got there, to ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. Wow. Yeah, and then I'm supposed to put my hands on him so that he can see. And guess what he's gonna see when he can see? Well, what are you doing here instead of doing what Jesus said to do? Because when Saul's able to see, he's gonna see me. And I mean, I'm an okay guy, but I believe in God. And you see this? He throws. No, not the mustache. This. You see this? He throws these at us, Christians. It's like why? And this? He puts us in chains in jail. And you see this wooden spoon right here? Yeah. He doesn't cook with it, but I don't want to find out what he does with it. It's very hard to do this. Have you ever had a time where it was hard to do? Well, maybe my friends here can help you with something that we've just learned. Let's say it together. Jesus's power helps us do hard things. Okay, but this is a really hard thing to do, like a super hard thing to do. I'm not sure I can do it. Have you guys ever had a hard time and didn't know if you could do it? I have, and I'm betting my friends have too. In fact, we were just talking about it. You know. It's easy to talk about trusting Jesus, but what does it really feel like to trust Jesus? Ananias, let's try something. Can you lay your chains down and your mustache? No,、oh, not my mustache. And stand in front of me. Now, spread your arms wide and fall backwards. Wow, falling backwards on purpose. Is hard and scary. Is that how you're feeling about seeing Saul? Yeah. Have you ever had to do something hard? I bet so. Now, boys and girls, I bet you really want to try that trust fall, don't you? Kind of looks fun, doesn't it? Well, don't try it at home unless mom and dad or another trusted adult can help you. It's not going to be pretty. If you don't have an trusted adult, well, earlier we talked about some things that you will find hard to do, like maybe your math or somersaults or playing the piano. But I'm wondering, what's something hard happening in your life right now? Maybe you're worried about heading off to school in the fall, or maybe you've had a fight with your best friend and you don't know if you'll ever be friends again. You know, something hard in my life this week was my precious aunt passed away from cancer. That was a very difficult thing to deal with. Maybe you can pause the program for just a minute and talk about 
those hard things that are happening in your life right now with those that you are watching. Ananias, did you hear them? They all have hard things that they're going through. I bet it would be um, interesting to hear what they had to say, wouldn't it? So, you know what God has asked you to do, and you know you're not alone, that we've all have hard things to do, and you know this, Jesus' power helps us to do hard things. Trust Jesus. Now, all that's left for you to do is what you need to do. Are you ready? I'm just uh, mm, 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 mm. Tell you what, would it make you feel better if I prayed for you? Most definitely. Prayer is just talking to God, boys and girls. I'm going to talk to God for you. Is that okay? And I'm going to ask Him to give you courage. Let's do that. Jesus, I ask that you would embolden Ananias right now and give him the courage he needs to do the very hard thing that you've asked him to do. Make him brave and make him bold for you. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. All right Ananias, you think you can do it? Yeah, maybe. I'm still a little worried though, but. Well, I think that you could have learned that Jesus' power helps us to do hard things. You can trust Jesus. Okay. Well, I'll see you guys later. I'll come back and tell y'all how it went. I hope we get to find out just how it all turns out for Ananias. Maybe he'll stop back by later and tell us. Do you know what I just did for Ananias? You can do for all of those people in your lives that are going through hard times right now. In your travel bag, in your crafts, you will find a little prayer box. In that prayer box, you can decorate it however you wish, and then you can write down on a piece of paper the names of those people that you know that are going through a hard time. And you can slip it into that prayer box every morning. You can take off the lid, you can pull out their name, and you can ask Jesus to help them to be bold, to be brave, to be courageous, to be able to do the hard thing. In fact, right now, I want to pray with you that you will be bold and courageous. Can we do that? All right, let's close our eyes and talk to Jesus. Jesus, I ask that you would be with every boy and girl, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, whomever is watching this program, that you would empower them to be bold, to be courageous, to be brave, to be what you need them to be to do the hard thing that you've asked them to do. Help them to know that you never leave them or forsake them and that you give them strength to do exactly what you ask them to do. We sure do love you, Jesus, and we thank you for what you're going to do to help us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, it sounds like it's time for you to head off to the next station. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I'll see you tomorrow for a brand new true Bible story. Hi, I'm Ethan. I'm the guy who will give you a couple train facts each day. As everyone around here knows, I occasionally like to talk about trains. Did you know that the study of trains is called phrygenology? The word comes from two Latin words that means iron horse. This is what the early steam engines were called, the iron horse, since they enabled the train wagons to be pulled by steam instead of using real horses. The first actual real steam locomotive that was used to haul passengers was built by George Stevenson in 1825 and was called the locomotive number one. The first American locomotive built, named Tom Thumb, was given to the first railway in the U.S., the Baltimore and Ohio. 
a predecessor of the modern-day railroad company CSX. That's all for today. See you tomorrow. Hola a todos. Soy Luis Muñoz, el pastor de música aquí en la iglesia Parkview, la casa del Parkview Express. Estoy muy emocionado de que hayan decidido participar en estas vacaciones bíblicas. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, my brain is just going crazy. Let's start over. Hi, I'm Luis Muñoz. I'm the worship pastor here at Parkview Baptist Church, home of the Parkview Express. I am so glad that you decided to participate in this vacation Bible school. So while we are talking about the Rocky... Who, who's that? Oh, Ananias, come up here, friend. Ooh, I'm just back from seeing Saul. Ooh, I heard you were so afraid to see Saul. Well, I was, but my friends here told me and reminded me that Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. Awesome. So what happened? Well, I went to the house and opened the door and Saul was there. And he hadn't eaten for three days, but it was still scary. Mm. What do you do? Well, I went and placed my hands on his shoulders and said, Saul, the same Jesus that talked to you on the road to Damascus has told me to come here and give you back your sight and fill you with the Holy Spirit. Bam! These scaly things fell off his eyes. Wow, that's incredible, bud. Yeah, then he was baptized, and then he ate. Hmm, hmm. It sounds like God has some big plans for Saul. He does. And for everyone out there, he has big plans for everyone else. Well, I gotta run. I'll talk to you later. Okay, God bless. Well, we're so thrilled that you accompanied us on this first day here on Rocky Railway. We'll see you back tomorrow. God bless you.